Good afternoon, my dear students. Uh, we are going to have our lesson as I earlier communicated to you on our WhatsApp group. And uh, we are going to talk about our indicator. calculations. The good things that you already have your notes, and as I told you earlier, I hope you've been trying to read it through, and now you can follow uh, this question very easily. I know that you will have some questions. Please feel free to ask whenever you would like to ask something, because we shall be answering you. Um, in this topic, we we'll analyze the substances. Basically, here we we'll analyze, we'll analyze a mixture of two, two basic sub-based compounds. Basic here, we talk about the acid-based kind of substances. So these substances are bases, and these can be, we have three types of mixtures that we can analyze this. Uh, in this, we have a mixture of sodium hydroxide and the sodium carbonate. We have a mixture of sodium carbonate and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Then we can also have a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen carbonate. Uh, other similar mixtures can be potassium hydroxide and potassium carbonate. Yeah, these two mixtures are similar and they are treated in exactly the same way. Uh, or, yeah, the uh, corresponding mixture can be potassium carbonate and the, and the potassium hydrogen carbonate. We can have uh, uh, potassium hydroxide and the potassium hydrogen carbonate. Uh, sodium carbon, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are similar compounds. Compounds of sodium are similar to the corresponding compounds of potassium because in chemistry we have a saying that sodium and potassium, if they are not sisters or brothers, they are cousins or are even identical twins. So they have so many things that they do uh, in common. They do have in common. There are so many things that they do have uh, in common, we have two methods of analyzing these mixtures using the double indicator method. We have two. We have uh, two methods. Uh, we have the continuous, continuous method. Then we have the titrate. I can call it NMA, but for me, it's a little titrate or the titrate. Uh, those are the two methods that we have. The acids that we normally use, uh, normally used, we can use the hydrochloric acid, we can use nitric acid, we can use sulfuric acid. But for purposes of the game and not confusing you, we shall base our discussions mainly on the mixture which involves the compounds of sodium. Later on we shall be able to apply the same knowledge to, uh, to analyze mixtures which consist of compounds of uh, potassium. Then again, for purposes of uh, simplifying uh, this work for you, we shall first of all put the emphasis 
on using hydrochloric acid. Then later on, we shall apply the same knowledge to work on mixtures which are to be analyzed using uh, nitric acid or sulfuric acid. So I want to put a tick here to show you that in our discussions, we are going to be using compounds of sodium and we shall also be using uh, hydrochloric acid. But later on, when after when we have learned about the principles very well, we shall extend our knowledge to apply, uh, to apply the, the, the techniques on these other substances. Then it will be easier for you. Um, we are going to look at one by one. So we analyze these substances using acids. We analyze these substances using acids as I want to show you uh, right now. Let's begin with the mixture of sodium hydroxide and potassium, sorry, sodium hydroxide and sodium hydrogen, uh, sodium carbonate. Sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. Uh, we shall start by using the continuous, continuous method. And I want you to follow me here very, very uh, carefully. In the continuous method, you have your mixture here of uh, two compounds dissolved in water. You have sodium hydroxide solution and sodium carbonate Solution. So these two substances are both soluble in water and they have been dissolved in the same amount of water to form a solution. So this solution contains the two compounds. Now we want to determine what is the number of moles, number of moles of sodium hydroxide in this mixture and the number of moles of sodium carbonate in this mixture. When we determine the number of moles of each of these substances, you can then be able to get the concentration uh, concentrations both in moles per liter and in grams per liter of each of the components so the most important task basic task is to determine the number of moles of each of these substances in the mixture so what we use to determine that amount is the fact that all these substances are basic they are all bases they are all bases. Being bases means that they can react with it. They can react with it. acids. Now, uh, for purposes of simplicity, we shall use one acid. We shall begin by discussing one acid, as I have told you. And the acid which we shall use here is hydrochloric acid. So, you get your mixture here. You pick your pipette. You come and fetch from here. Pipette, uh, you bring your pipette, maybe of 20 cubic centimeters or 25 cubic centimeters. Uh, you take a sample, all of us have been pipetting right from all level, and we, even in a level, we have done a number of practicals. And I'm very sure that in this lesson, all the apparatus I'm going to mention we are very familiar with the them. So, you're going to understand this when you pay attention to the explanation. So you put the sample, you put it in a conical flask. All of us here know what conical flasks are. Yes. At least I know you people very well. I've been interacting with you and uh, you're one of the classes that uh, we've taught. Uh, so after preparing this, we uh, are picking this sample in pet. Now you transfer it into a conical flask. That means that this conical flask contains a mixture of sodium hydroxide solution and sodium, uh, sodium carbonate solution. Now this pet is of a bowl volume. The most common pets that we use are of 25 cubic centimeters. However, it can also be 20 cubic centimeters or 10 cubic centimeters. 
the most important thing is that this volume which you have created from this mixture should be known. It can be 25 centimeters, it can be 20 centimeters, it can be 10 centimeters, or any other volume. Then, if as long as that volume is known. Meanwhile, you also have your acid in a burette. Already, we have been using burettes and you know them very well. So, here you have your acid. Uh, we have decided to begin with hydrochloric acid, but even other acids can work. This one is a standard solution, standard solution of hydrochloric acid. The standard solution means that its uh, concentration is already known. Now you have two indicators, you have two indicators, two indicators, two acid based indicators. The indicators are phenolphthalein indicator, phenolphthalein indicator, and then methyl, methyl orange indicator. Now, in our normal titrations, as you have been studying, you know very well that in an experiment, we have been using only one indicator. If it is chlorophyllin, then it has been always chlorophyllin for the practical. And if it has been methyl orange, still, it has always been methyl orange. In the same practical, one indicator in a practical. The unique thing about this kind of analysis is that you are using two indicators in the same calculation. So because two is related to double, that's where the name of the topic comes from. That you use two indicators in the same this thing is not common, it is only found in this kind of analysis, and that's why this topic here was called double indicator calculations. We call it double indicator titrations, double indicator calculations, so uh, because it involves both titrations and the calculations. So you can call it double indicator titrations or double indicator calculations. We use it to analyze a mixer of two basic compounds. We said we have three pairs which I have already given you, but we decided to begin with a mixture of sodium hydroxide and the, so, and the sodium carbonate. So you have created a, an a report, a small sample from the mixture which you want to analyze. Now, when you prepare the substance, and now you have it in your conical flask, this is the conical flask, A conical flask. Now, meanwhile, you also have the standard solution of an acid. Uh, now, this acid is standard. In other words, its concentration is accurately known. Now, what you do before you add any acid, you first add one indicator. The indicator we start with is phenolphthalein. You start. You start by adding phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein indicator. Indicator. Yes. When you add the phenolphthalein indicator, the solution which has been colorless will turn to purple. The supply solution will turn purple. Now, it is turning purple because this, sub, this mixture here is alkaline or basic. You know, when you add phenolphthalein indicator to an alkaline solution, it will the solution will turn uh, purple. Now, after the solution has turned the purple, you start titrating. You start titrating. You have added the phenolphthalein indicator, and now the solution is what is purple. Oh, we shall use pH to stand for uh, phenolphthalein indicator. Since the name is very long, then we shall use M E to stand for methyl or indicator. So you add a few drops. There can be two drops or three drops of the indicator. Yes. Now, when you add the indicator, the solution will turn purple. When the solution turns purple, you start your your uh, titration. Before titrating, you need to be knowing the initial the initial uh, duret reading, initial reading of the duret, and then you have your table. Somewhere, let's put our table here. Yeah. We know very well we have been doing this. So we have the final duret reading, initial, then volume used. That is with the phenolphthalein indicator. 
we shall have another table maybe when we are using internal range indicator. And again, we have uh, we have uh, nine spaces where well, right, uh, those values, the final, the initial, then the volume used. Uh, so you record your initial volume. Maybe it can be 0 0.0 or oh, any value. There's no rule that the initial value must be 0. It can be any value. Just be sure that the solution there is enough when you reach the end point. So uh, now we start the time. After noting the initial, you start your type question slowly by slowly until when the solution time changes color from purple uh, to colors. Now we have two substances in there. We have sodium hydroxide. Uh, during the titration, the acid here will react with sodium hydroxide. And the equation for reaction is the acid plus so, uh, the sodium uh, hydroxide plus the acid will give us sodium chloride and, and water. This so we can create some space. Uh, yes. Then we also have sodium carbonate. This sodium carbonate will react with the acid in two phases. Sodium carbonate will first of all react with the hydrochloric acid to form sodium hydrogen carbonate plus sodium chloride yes water sodium carbonate plus sodium chloride uh, so those are the two products that are formed and the equations are already balanced. So, uh, there is another reaction which, after this sodium carbonate has been formed. Now, this is this, the indicator. The, the indicator will, uh, sorry, the color of the solution will turn from purple to colorless when these two reactions have occurred. After that, this was the first indicator. After that, you add the second indicator to the same mixture. We said let's let's use M, which stands for methyl orange indicator. Now, after the solution has turned from purple to colorless, you don't power away uh, the mixture. You continue with the same mixture, and that's where the name comes from: continuous method. That when the solution changes color. After titrating on adding the first indicator, you don't power away the mixture. Instead, you continue with the same mixture which you have formed. That's where this name comes from. So add another uh, two or three drops of methyl orange indicator to the same mixture without powering uh, away anything. Meanwhile, this volume here, uh, which of the acid which was required, we can give it a nickname, we can call it VL, VP, where VP equals volume of acid required in the titration involving involving phenolphthalein. as indicator. Or we can write this somewhere because we need this space for the equation. Uh, VP VP equals volume of acid required in the type pressure. When using the offering as indicator, 
So uh, at this step, we have now added the methyl orange and we are continuing. Assuming maybe after after the uh, when, when you add the phenolphthalein you know, indicator and the titrated from zero, your new value may be 20. 20, maybe 20.5 it, it is it can be any value depending on what you used what amount used in preparing this mixture so we we'll say that VP in this case VP is 20.50 here you can either top up or if you feel that this remaining solution is enough you can start from there and continue uh, so maybe you can decide that let this final now be in my initial in the next type pressure so to be 20.5 as your initial but you can use any other value because sometimes you realize that the remaining solution may not be enough for you to reach the end point so then you have to top up again and that's what you should record here as the initial value using when you are using the second indicator so you have added the indicator which is missile range this solution here is still alkaline so being alkaline means that when you add the methyl orange indicator, this solution will turn from colorless to, to yellow. From colorless to yellow after the after the second type uh, after before before we type the solution turn from uh, colorless to yellow. Remember at first it turned the purple from colorless to purple, and on titration it turned from purple to colorless back because uh, the, the reaction had occurred between the acid and the, these substances. At this step, we have with our orange indicator being added, and now the solution is turning from colorless to yellow. When the solution turns from colorless to yellow, then you start, uh, you resume your titration. During this titration, uh, we titrate until when the color of the solution changes from yellow to red a uh, yellow uh, the such a first of all turns yellow and then when titrate it goes to red at the end point red at the end point here when you add the methyl orange uh, it turns purple and the, and then it goes to colorless at the end point at any point. Now, in the second iteration, when the indicator being used is methyl orange, uh, the reaction which takes place is that sodium hydrogen carbonate reacts with the acid to form, uh, to form sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus, plus water. Glass water. Very good. Now the volume, that additional volume of the acid, maybe now from the 20.5, you've gone up to say 29 or 28. So it's maybe 00. zero. Here the volume used is 20.5. Here the volume used when you subtract you get 7.50 in centimeters. So uh, this volume here is what we call Vm. So Vm means volume of acid required in the titration when using uh, methyl orange. As, as indicator. And in our titration, our example here, uh, we've chosen our chosen 7.5 TBP centimeters. Now, when you determine these volumes, you are done with most of the work. The remaining thing, now you are done with the titration and you are remaining with the titration. If the more the might of the acid is known, as is usually the case, maybe assuming it's 0.1 molar, 
uh, 0.5 it can be it can have any molarity uh, so because uh, if the procedures are open to concentrations you can have any molarity that you have that but the most important thing is that that molarity must be known now for those who have come in a little bit late I would like to repeat for you because this is the most important part of this uh, in this topic. The introduction here plays a very important role in this topic. Uh, I say that in this kind of titration, you analyze a mixture of two basic compounds. We got our mixed our examples of mixtures of basic compounds, and then we chose to begin with the mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. So we see that in this kind of situation, you have your mixture somewhere. It can be in a beaker or in a jerry can or anywhere. So as long as you can prepare that substance from there. So assuming this one is a beaker, a beaker, and you have your mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium uh, carbonate, you pick your pipette to any volume, it can be 25, 20, or 10. But it must be known. Uh, you prepare from this substance, but all, these volumes are always given to you in your procedures. It's not uh, upon you as the student to choose this. The procedures will always be telling you uh, clearly that you use a pet of 25 or 20. And so that's not a uh, point to worry about on your side. Uh, so you prepare this substance and put it in a conical flask. Meanwhile, you have your uh, acid. You have decided to use hydrochloric acid because it's the simplest one to use. We shall be using other acids in the future. So this one is the uh, this one is the uh, burette containing the acid. So you have created the sample from the mixture and you have put it in the conical flask. And now you have your acid standard solution of an acid with concentration of normal of us. And now we want to carry out your analysis. We start by adding one indicator at a time. You start with the phenolphthalein indicator. Normally we begin with the phenolphthalein indicator. You add a few drops of phenolphthalein indicator to the solution. Uh, the solution it has been colorless will turn purple. After the solution has turned purple, you start uh, you, 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 you note the initial reading on the burette, put it somewhere. And then start the type pressure until when the purple solution turns colors again. At this point, you stop because that is the first end point which occurs in the first type pressure when you're using the local indicator. Now, that indicator, that, that end point occurs when all the sodium hydroxide in the mixture has been neutralized sodium chloride and water and when the sodium carbonate has been half neutralized this sodium carbonate is usually neutralized in two steps each step requiring the same amount of acid this uh, in the when you are titrating using phenolphthalein as the indicator the sodium carbonate will be half neutralized when it is half neutralized you form sodium hydrogen carbonate and the sodium Chloride, the only form to products. Now we stop there. Ah, then you look, pick a bottle of methanol. Don't pour this mixture away. Just to the same mixture, continue and add methanol already. That's where the name comes from, that continuously methanol. You said the, the, the word double comes from the fact that you use two indicators. It's not common. Use two indicators in the same titration. This kind of calculation of titration is unique in a way that we use two indicators. That one is related to, to two because of the use of two indicators in the same experiment. Now, after that, you have you you you, you have added you add you are adding now you add now methyl range indicator. The solution which has been turned colorless will turn yellow because this solution is still alkaline. The solution will turn yellow. Then you titrate. You can use your initial value. Before titration, you can use your initial value as the final from the previous. But when you realize that this amount of acid may not be enough, 
you can top up your budget to a higher to, to so that you can have a larger amount of the asset. Uh, so uh, after adding methyl orange, you titrate. You titrate and titrate until when the yellow solution now turns red. That will be marking the end point of the titration. When the end point occurs, you stop there and not the and not the volume. This volume we chose just I just chose, but the experiment you will dictate what the actual value will be. So you record this one as your final direct reading. When you subtract final minus initial, here I have got 7.5. Uh, final minus minus uh, initial here I got 20.5. Yes. So because in our titrations we need to carry out a number of experiments. You uh, are to get the consistent values, you repeat the procedures. You prepare another, you prepare another volume, in, uh, which is equal to the first one. You add the phenolphthalein indicator, titrate, of course, you need to be having enough acid in the debate. Titrate using phenolphthalein indicator until when the solution turns from purple to colorless, then record that volume of the debate. Assuming here I went back to 0 0.00 and now I got maybe uh, 20.50, I'll be very accurate, I've got it, 0 0.50. Uh, then I decided also to use the same value, to adjust it maybe, I can choose to, to use another one, maybe uh, 21, it can be any value, as long as you're sure that uh, the people is not empty without uh, you finishing uh, the, that titration. And maybe here I've got 28.6. That would mean that this is now 7.6 centimeters. So that is the second title. Then on the third title, maybe I go and use 1.00. And I realize that I, I, I want to create 1.50. This will now be 20.50. When I choose two values to be used to cut it average, I will be having 20.50 plus 20.50 over 2. So that will be my volume of the, of the uh, average data value. Then maybe here I have used 21.5 as my initial here. And then at the end of it, maybe I have... Um, 20, 20, uh, 9.5, uh, yeah, meaning that this is now 8.00, then that means this, uh, you will be a little bit far from these two, that means I'll be choosing 7.50 and 7.60 as the value of the average, in that case, I'll be getting 7.55 big centimeters. So these values here are very important. The average data values which you get are very, very important. They are the ones that we shall call, this one will be called our VP, and this one will be called our VM. Yeah, but VP stands for volume of acid required in titration when using an open indicator. And then uh, our average here is 7.55. Uh, the value which you get depends on the particular experiment. These are just chosen values which should not be round or taken as the value that it should always be. Uh, so at this point, you have your value. As I told you, when you get the value, and VM, you already you already done some good work, but you not you know you are not yet done. Now, how do we treat those results? That's what I want us to talk about now. How do you treat those values? How do you get the volume of the acid? Which you have to use because you have to analyze these substances separately. We need to know the volume of acid which has reacted with sodium hydroxide. The volume of the acid which has reacted with uh, sodium carbonate. So, uh, one very important fact to note here is that 
Sodium carbonate is neutralized in two phases, each phase requiring the same volume of the acid. That means that the volume of acid that you need in this uh, uh, in this reaction is the same as the volume of acid that you need in this very reaction. So that implies that if this is Vm, this is also Vm. And if this is Vm, while well, this is Vp, that means that the volume of acid required to react with sodium hydroxide alone would be if all of, if these two are VP and this one alone is VM, that means that this volume here will be VP minus VM. Now, what about sodium carbonate? Sodium carbonate is in two phases. We have the first phase and the second one, but when you combine these two reactions, you will get the overall reaction which talks about the complete neutralization of sodium carbonate. When I combine these two reactions, I get sodium carbonate reacts with uh, hydrochloric acid, two of them, to form sodium chloride, two of them, plus carbon dioxide, plus here, plus water. So these two reactions are embedded in this one, and this requires a volume of acid which we shall have. If you add Zm and Vm, you get to Vm. That means that the volume of acid, the volume of acid, let's see it, uh, acid required to neutralize, to neutralize uh, sodium hydroxide is equal to Vp minus Vm. And in this case, we know these volumes. Uh, we have said that Vp is 20.50, while Vm is 7.55. When you subtract there, you can get the answer. Then the volume, the volume of acid required to neutralize, to neutralize sodium carbonate. We have said it is the combination of these two because sodium carbonate is neutralized in two phases. This is something which is very, very important in this uh, calculation that the sodium carbonate is neutralized in two phases, each one requiring the same volume of, of acid, which volume we have said is Vm. So the overall volume for neutralizing sodium carbonate is 2Vm. Therefore, here we shall write. Uh, 2V, 2VM, 2VM, and this will be 2 times, where is our VM, 7.55, can put it there and get the answer, so I need to put it that one, and we get the answer very quickly, so that we can continue, uh, 20.50 minus 7.55. I've got uh, minus 12.9 56 centimeters. Then this is 2, 2 times 7.55. This gives us 15. 0.10 cubic centimeters. So when you get those volumes, the work, the rest of the work becomes very easy. Now we can we can calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. We can calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate. Uh, let's calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide first. Uh, how do we get the number of moles of sodium hydroxide? Number of moles of sodium hydroxide. 
Assume the acid has a concentration of, uh, assume the acid was 0 0.1 molar HCl. Let's see how we can calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. What we know is that uh, sodium hydroxide was reacting with HCl. Uh, the, the volume of sodium hydroxide was the entire volume of the pipette. We assume that we, we use the pipette of 25 cubic centimeters. So volume is 25 cubic centimeters. Uh, the molarity of sodium hydroxide is not known. The volume of the acid, we have just determined it that we have sodium hydroxide and said it is 12.95 cubic centimeters. And then the molarity of the acid is also known. We said maybe to be the point one more. So here it becomes very easy for us to determine the number of moles. It's very, 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 very easy. We start from where the information is sufficient. So you say a thousand cubic centimeters of of the solution, of the acid solution contains 0.1 moles of HCl. So what about the volume which we have used, which is 0.95 cubic centimeters of HCl solution? This one contains 0 0.1 times 0.95 over uh, 1,000 moles. It's here. When you multiply it here, you get uh, 0.00125 moles. And now here, this is going to write the equation of reaction. Sodium hydroxide reacts with HCl to form sodium chloride and water. Uh, the more ratio the more ratio of the reaction in sodium hydroxide and it's here is one to one meaning that one mole of it's here reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide so what about this two zero point zero one to nine five moles of it's here you react with the post mark plus. The answer looks obvious, but you add more marks when you show the work of one times zero point zero zero one two nine five over one mole. So the answer is zero point zero zero one two nine five. You can go ahead and cut it the uh, concentration, the concentration in moles per liter. When you know the number of moles and you know the volume, it becomes very easy for you to calculate uh, the concentration in moles per liter. Then when you calculate the concentration in moles per liter, which you call the volume, you can use it along with the RFM of sodium hydroxide to capture the concentration in grams per liter. I'm very, very, very sure that there you can continue and get the concentration in grams per liter of sodium uh, hydroxide. I want to show you how we get the number of moles of sodium uh, carbonate in the mixture. So number of moles, moles of sodium carbonate. Uh, we have sodium carbonate uh, reacting with this here. The volume of sodium carbonate, again we take the volume of the pipette which was used which you chose to be 25 cubic centimeters, the molarity of sodium carbonate is not known. The volume of the acid, this time we take the volume which was referred to dry sodium carbonate, 
and we have calculated it as 15.10 to 15 centimeters. Then the moment of the acid is the sense, we have decided to call it 0.10 molar, and that one can work for us. So you start from where the information is sufficient so that you get the number of moles of the acid. I know here you are following me very easily. Uh, if you were in the class, I would call one person to come and do this for us. And we know so many of you who can do this. I can even start mentioning your names and you will wonder. But when I mention your names, those whose names I will not mention will be will not, will not feel good about you. So let me leave the names and just continue with our calculation. So we say a thousand cubic centimeters of the X here solution to our solution. Contain 0.1 moles of HCM. What about which volume? Which volume are we using? 15, 15.10 cubic centimeters of HCM solution. Contain 0.1 times. 0.1 times 15, that one zero over 1,000 moles of good year. Here we get 0 0.001510 uh, moles of good year. At this juncture, we write the equation for the reaction that took place. And in this case, the equation of the reaction, which takes place between a hydrochloric acid and, and sodium carbonate, is sodium carbonate react with H, uh, to HCl to form two sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus water. The more ratio. Of sodium carbonate to HCl equals 1 to 2, meaning that uh, 2 moles of HCl react with 1 mole of sodium carbonate. What about the moles of HCl which you have? 0 0.00151 0 moles. Of which here we react with here we simply cross matter and say one times 2.00 1510 uh, over 2 and these are moles of sodium carbon. The answer we get here will be 0. Point Zero 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 seven five five moles of sodium carbonate. So now we have the moles of sodium carbonate. You can use these moles to go ahead and cut the molarity because it becomes very easy to cut the molarity when you have the moles of the substance and the volume. What will be seven cubic centimeters of sodium carbonate contain this moles? What about a thousand? What the, what the number of moles that it will contain is what we call the molarity. You can go ahead and calculate the concentration in advance for it. For me, what I see is that the most important task here is getting this volume. First of all, analyzing the equations and then getting this volume. Once you get the volume of acid, which has got to be like H, any compound, then the rest of the work becomes the very, very easy. At this point, I want us to, to, to go through an example which we already have, uh, which says, this one is on page 37, 
and it says that 25 cubic centimeters of a mixture of sodium and sodium, sodium was repeated. So we want to do that example together very quickly and then we will see what we can do thereafter. The example we are doing is on page 37. Example on page 37. So read that example and then we will do it. So this was a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate created into a conical flask. Uh, so you had a mixture. You had a mixture. Of, uh, of uh, sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate in, uh, and then pipetted fire pipet was put into a conical flask and then titrated with an acid. Uh, this acid was the 0 0.1 molar, 0 0.1 molar HCl, and then uh, so this is a mixture of sodium hydroxide and sodium carbonate. Uh, so you added two groups of uh, phenolphthalein indicator. The mixture was diluted. So VP here, according to this number, VP is 22.50 cubic centimeters. Then this mixture was not poured away. To the same mixture, after attaining the first indicator, uh, end point, another indicator was added, which is now methyl orange. Orange. And then titration was continued using the same acid. So in this case, the volume of acid which was required was 8.5. That means Vm this time is 8.50 cubic centimeters. From our number, we can get directly these values and then uh, by knowing the reactions which really take place, we can find out the actual volume of acid which is acting with sodium water, and then the volume of acid which is acting with the sodium Carbonate. So the equations, the reaction which took place are sodium hydroxide reacted with the acid to form sodium chloride and water. The other one is that sodium carbonate also reacted with the acid in two phases. And in the first phase, it reacted with the acid to form sodium hydrogen carbonate and sodium chloride. This is what we call half neutralization. These two reactions after they had taken place, that's when the indicator, uh, the solution turned from purple to carries. So that the volume required for these two reactions is what we call the deep heat. Then at this stage, that's when methyl oil was added and the sodium hydrogen carbon to have been formed in the first phase is the one which now reacted with, with the acid, the hydrochloric acid, to form sodium chloride plus carbon dioxide plus, air, plus water. In this case, this is when we have used uh, methyl oil. That means that the volume of the acid which is required is what we call PM. Now, these two reactions require the same acid. That means that if this one takes Vn, this one also takes Vn. And when we combine the two, this is the overall reaction of sodium carbonate, and this volume of acid required is Vn. Then the volume of uh, acid required here, because these two take, uh, took Vp as the volume of the acid, this one alone has Vm. That means that this one alone will have Vp, Minus B M. So volume. Then a four. 
the volume of acid required to neutralize to neutralize sodium hydroxide is equal to Vp minus Va, which is 22.50 minus 8.50. In this case, we get when we subtract 22, 22 uh, point five zero minus 8.5, we get 14. 14 14.00 uh, centimeters and then the volume the volume of acid the volume of acid the volume of acid the acid is required to neutralize uh, sodium carbonate is two V in this case is two times eight point five. So when you, when I use my calculator here, I get uh, two times eight point five, and that is seventeen point zero zero degree. So those are my two volumes. From there, this is what you do. You get uh, they have asked you to get the concentration of ones per liter in terms of Roman one sodium hydroxide. So what you do, you can summarize your information. Sodium hydroxide versus hydrochloric acid. The volume of here, the volume of sodium hydroxide uh, was at the volume of 25 which is centimeters. Uh, the molarity is not known, it's what we can look for. Then the volume of the acid which required out here to sodium hydroxide is 14.00 centimeters. The, uh, the molarity of the acid is 0 0.1 molar. We can use this information to get the moles of sodium hydroxide, uh, the molarity of sodium hydroxide, and then the concentration in grams per liter of solution in terms of sodium hydroxide. So this one we have seen how we get it, and this one we have been learning right from all level when we have the moles how to get the molarity. And then from all level, how do we do the concentration? And I hope you will be able to do this in your free time. Uh, then when it comes to sodium carbonate, uh, we have sodium carbonate and HCl. The volume here is the same as the volume of the plate which was used according to our number there, is 25 centimeters. The molarity here is not known. Uh, the volume of the acid. Uh, the sodium carbonate is 17.00 centimeters, and then the molarity is 0 0.2.1 molar here. So again, we can use this information. We can use this information to get the moles of sodium carbonate, uh, molarity of sodium carbonate, and then concentration of grams per liter in terms of sodium carbonate. At this juncture, I know very well that when you follow my explanation very well, you can be able to do this to complete this number. I've done a lot of work for you. Then the other thing now is to see how do you deal with the practical situation that is our uh, experiment number 38. Now, in uh, I mean, uh, page number 38, uh, on that page, 
you will just choose you can choose any value of your um, uh, of yours uh, a value of your choice can be used um, like a perpetual volume you can send me use a bit of uh, I want to give you an, an exercise so you work out uh, that number first of all complete this number by getting the answer uh, then uh, another part, uh, another thing that I want you to do, the other thing I want you to do is um, there is a, a number on page 38 which you can do. So our exercise is that complete number one, complete above number this one get the concentration of brown spirit of sodium hydroxide and then the concentration of brown spirit of sodium carbonate i am very sure you will be able to get it uh, then number two uh the number the number refer to the number on page Choosing, choosing to pay the boring because plenty, but it's a little bit. And then you choose a big pill, you choose a big pill before you go. to 21.20 in centimeters and then a big pen equal to, to 9.35 in centimeters uh, fill the tables accordingly fill the tables accordingly and uh, and go through the uh, calculations. I trained you on how to do this, and I'm very sure you will be able to complete this uh, exercise successfully. I must thank you for uh, being attentive for those of you and also uh, I request you to go through the other methods so that by the time you come to discuss them you have a clue about how we go through those numbers and that will make our next lessons uh, very very small. If you have any comments please forward them so that you can review them. I wish you the best in whatever you do and I love you very much. I would like you to uh, ensure that you observe the SOPs because you guys are the ones who are going to make this world fruitful to us and also Which mm -hmm. book I need? Yeah, the book. Mm -hmm. A reference book we are using is uh, Chemistry uh, Practical Manual for Advanced Level, uh, to secondary school copy edition. You can approach me on 070 and I give you a copy of the book. You can, click, you can get, uh, if you get into contact with the students of Chibuli Secondary School, they will give you a contact, uh, my contact. And if you need a copy, 
I will avail you with one, inshallah. Is there any other comment? I don't know if I see the complaint, I just think I understand. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see, so let's see what you do here. No money. Let's do it. Thank <laughs> you.